Welcome to Core Program. In this video, we are going to discuss how to create custom middleware in ASP.NET Core. So far in this video series, we have discussed about what is middleware and what the benefit of using middleware. In this video, we are going to see how to create our own custom middleware and plug it into the application pipeline. Middleware is the new pipeline for the request in ASP.NET Core. Each piece of the middleware can process part of all of the requests and then either choose to return the result or pass on down to the next piece of middleware. If you want to execute your own logic and some stuff like uh, one authentication or authorization or you can maintain the application log information etc. So in that case you can use custom middleware. Visual Studio includes the template for creating the standard custom middleware class. Let's flip to Visual Studio and create a ASP.NET Core application and we'll see how to create a custom middleware. We have already created a sample ASP.NET Core application with the empty project template. As I said, the Visual Studio includes template for creating standard middleware class. To add the middleware class, right click on the project, then add new item, then search here middleware class. You can see the middleware class is present here. Let's rename it my custom middleware. Add this. After adding this, you can see that the middleware class have a default template. So let's discuss about this. The custom middleware component is like any other .NET class with the invoke method. However, in order to execute the next middleware in a sequence, it should have a request delegate type parameter in the constructor. As I said, the custom middleware is used to add your own logic. In this middleware, I am going to add a custom logging mechanism to check the middleware process flow. In ASP.NET Core application, there is a interface is available that is iLogger factory. The iLogger factory interface is belongs to Microsoft.extensions.logging namespace. Let's rename that log factory. In our upcoming videos, we go through details about the logging mechanism. Let's declare a private variable here. Private read only i logger. Let's name as underscore logger. Then we need to initialize and create the logger. So underscore logger equal to log factory dot create logger. Let's name here my custom middleware. You can name it accordingly. Then I put the logging information here. So to add this logger dot log information, you can see that there is different type of property you can handle uh, like log information, log debug, log error, log warning, and log critical etc. But in my case, I want to hold just log information. So I type this middleware is started. And on the invoke method, we need to execute our logic. So here we also need to put the logging information, right? Logger information, my middleware is executed. Let's make as async. Then here we need to change it await underscore next dot invoke. Because in order to execute the next middleware in a sequence, it go to the request delegate type parameter in the constructor. So now in custom middleware, our logic is complete. So let's move to the startup.cs class. And here we need to add the custom middleware. You can see that in the my custom middleware class, there is a constructor and there is an extension method. In that extension method, there is use a static i application builder. This is responsible to add the middleware to the HTTP request processing pipeline. So we need to call like app.use my custom middleware in the startup.cs. So right here, app dot use my custom middleware right finally build the application then run the project when you move to the application and in the output window you can see that the custom log information is printed here my middleware is executed as we declare it in invoke method so instead of debug window suppose we move it to web server then you can see that the, all the information is printed here the information is first 
my middleware is started then finally the my middleware is executed like this if you want to add a information about that or warning let's uh, type us something went wrong then add another log mechanism let's say log error that's it application error run the application then go to the output window then move here to custom middleware you can see that all information is printed here there is information warning and the error this is a simple example of a logging mechanism of in a custom middleware in our upcoming videos we go through the details about the logging mechanism toward the custom middleware you need to keep in mind that the custom middleware should be added in the configure method like this let's see another small example here is printed hello world in a custom middleware we set another information with combination of hello world and the custom middleware text so let's comment this line of code we need to add the response in a body so you need to modify here like await then context dot response then body then you can see that the overloaded method need to be add though in the byte format as you know the encoding is belongs to system dot text namespace then dot ascii dot get bytes then the text name let's make us hello world and remove this line of code copy the same line of code in the inbox method paste here and change the text here make it as http context and then add the namespace using system.text execute and run the application now you can see the custom middleware text is printed first then in the startup method then this line of response is printed in our previous video session we already discussed about the middleware order so instead of calling the custom middleware here just move to here then run the application and we will see how the text is printed now you can see that only the endpoints text is printed here but our custom middleware text is not printed this is because let's go to the previous example of the middleware and see the execution order you can see that this is the execution order of the middleware the request is coming through the middleware and first it go to the exception handler then hsts then http redirection static file then authentication authorization then it go to the custom middleware after the endpoint we have used endpoints then after the custom middleware so that it violate the execution order of the middleware so the text is not printed so when i move the custom middleware to here and then run the application you can see that now the custom middleware text is printed also the endpoint text is printed for more details you can go through the core program article the link is shared on the description box today in this video we discussed all the possible point of the custom middleware hope it will help you on the real time project that's it in the video do like and subscribe for more upcoming videos thanks for watching Thank you.